What's going on, Internet? Lambo here, bringing you a somewhat different video than I typically do. This one is actually in direct response to a question posed on one of my previous videos. As some of you may be aware, I have a video series where I cover the various miniatures I've used to replace Gloomhaven standee cardboard figures from the Gloomhaven board game. And in my most recent one, I showed off this what awesome-looking dragon, which replaces the running drake from the Gloomhaven board game. And when I was showing it off, I mentioned that it, I had to actually take this giant model, assemble it in Mesh Mixer, and then print it in one solid print. And then a user by the name of Calabunga here asked this question, asked how I could, uh, how I did that, basically, to expand on what I'd done to make the Depth Dragon small enough for a hex. I bought the file, or she, I don't know, and it doesn't know how to resize it and play with it, so we didn't have to assemble it all, because when you get this model, it comes in a bunch of different pieces. So I tried to uh, start typing out a response to that question, and it was getting way too complicated, and I figured it'd be just way easier to go through the process in a video. So here we go. Now, if you don't know, Delani the Depth Dragon, which is the model I used, comes from a fantastic uh, modeling company or group going, who go by the name, they're the Artisan Guild. I assume it's a they, I don't know. But anyway, if you don't know who they are, you can check them out on Patreon, here on My Mini Factories where I get their stuff. But they sell fantastic miniatures for 3D printing. And this is Delani the Death Dragon. Now Delani's an awesome model, uh, looks phenomenal, but she's huge, or he. Delani sounds like a girl, whatever. The dragon is big. Here's, you know, stacked up against other big models. You see that tiny one there. And there you go. For size comparison, the model's massive. There's no way it's going to fit on one small hex uh, as is. And you're not going to be able to get what I have accomplished uh, like that. So what we're going to do is show you how I've done that using Mesh Mixer. So here you go, Cowabunga. This one's for you and anyone else who finds this useful. <laughs> first things first, you need to have Mesh Mixer to do this properly. There might be other ways to do it. I only know Mesh Mixer, and I should probably throw out right now, I am not a pro at Mesh Mixer. I've kind of taught myself how to do it, so I can't guarantee that this is the 100% correct way to do what we're about to do, but it works, because the proof's in the pudding, right? But take that with a grain of salt. You've been warned. You're getting tips from an amateur, a self-taught amateur. All right, we've got Mesh Mixer open. We're going to start importing the files from the, the download. Now they come in a bunch of different pieces, and we're just going to go one by one, bringing them in. As I bring these pieces in, I like to have the object browser viewable, so I put just push that off to the side. And then, as you'll see, as these pieces start to come in one by one, they line up to where they were supposed to be in relation to the whole model. Uh, and that is because when this file was exported from artisan guild they left those pieces where they were supposed to be in the export and that makes our life a lot easier uh, not every file is going to do this that's broken up but this particular one uh, is left so that when yes we import every single piece the head the arms tail all that they line up uh, to the whole model we don't have to sit there and try and move an arm or a tail or anything else together uh, just know that it's a hit and miss some models that are separate won't have this already done, and others will like this one. So that makes our life a lot easier. Okay, so now that we've got Delani all assembled and put together, we're going to make this one solid model by pressing the Combine button. And there you go. Now Delani is one complete model. Now you could just export the model right here leaving it as is, just as, as an assembled STL. And it would print, because that's how I did it the first time, but we're going to improve upon what I did the first time, and we're going to make it solid by pressing that button right here. And then with the magic of editing, I'm going to speed up this whole process, which can take a while, depending on the processing speed of your computer. So here we go. So first thing you'll notice is this does not look like Delani, but more like Delani's mother-in-law. We're going to need to increase the accuracy of that... Uh, solid process by sliding that bar there and then we're going to go to the drop down bar here and we're going to select accurate from these options and then we're going to run that process again by pressing update and again this takes a while I'm going to speed it up for you. Alright 
So now we've got a better looking Delaunay, but not quite what we're looking for. So I'm going to take the mesh density bar and I'm going to slide it over. And because I know the limits of my computer processor, I'm not going to slide it all the way over to the far edge because uh, sometimes I've seen that crash my computer or just never finishes. It's just too much work on my system. I'm going to guess and just put it right about here. And then I'll let it run again. And then I'm going to, again, speed this whole process up. I think in reality this took about 10 minutes to process on my system, but you're going to see it done really quick. The update has completed, and I like the way that this turned out. The detail's crisp. It is definitely good enough for me to print on my resin printer to reduce size, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that process. And from here, I will create an export STL, fully assembled, save it, whatever you want, and it, I could load this into Cheetah Box and go from there. But if you wanted to make sure your file didn't have any major issues, you could click Analysis and then the Inspector button, and that will go through and check your file for any major issues that could come up during slicing or printing. And as you can see here, it's identified uh, a bunch of potential problems highlighted in Magenta primarily. I know from experience that if I click on a Magenta uh, Fix button, it will just remove that portion entirely. So I need to inspect to make sure none of these highlighted areas are important parts of the file typically on the outside. Uh, it looks like they're all pointing to the inside, something interior in the structure that's left over. I'm going to go ahead and click Auto Repair All and just remove them entirely. Uh, but you need to know this because if you have a highlighted portion that's magenta and it's on the exterior of the file, it's just going to remove it. And in most cases, then I just ignore those and leave them. But since I don't see any on the outside, I'm just going to Auto Repair them all and go from there. Okay, we're going to give it one final inspection, make sure nothing's missing. No major issues that I can see. We'll click this little red guy here to disregard him. Uh, just look around the model real fast. And yeah, it looks good to me. So we could export this as it is. Uh, but let's go ahead and resize him to see where he should be sized now that we've done this whole process. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in one of my hex tiles that I want to base my sizing off of. Uh, I'm going to pen the file to this mesh, and then I'm going to press the hotkey N, which will center it in the build view. And then I'm going to select the dragon model and also press the N key to also center that model as well. And then I can have them all close together. So now I'm just going to go ahead and resize the dragon uh, using this little white box there in the middle. Uh, by selecting that, I can resize the whole thing proportionally and I will go ahead and play with the sizing uh, just to try and figure out about what size I want this print to be with compared to my hex size. You could do this with the base or whatever you want. Um, once I've got a size I like, I'm going to go ahead and export that file as a different STL, and then I know when I load it up, I've sized it the way I want every time. And that's basically it. You've now created one solid model when you started with a lot of smaller pieces assembled as one STL. But just to verify, we'll load it up into Chi2Box, which is the slicer I use for resin prints, and just verify that it still looks good. And it seems like it does. And so you can check vertically that the model is indeed solid and is now ready for it to be supported. You could also hollow out the model and create drainage holes if you like. That's totally up to you. Um, but as far as supports go, uh, that's outside the scope of this video. I highly recommend you follow 3D Printing Pro if you want to know how to create really good supports for resin models. I follow his tutorials and instructions, uh, but I will go ahead and show you what a finally supported version of the model looks like uh, by loading up my previous one here. And there you have it. That is the process I use to take the Delaunay Depth Dragon by Artisan Guild model, import all the various pieces into Mesh Mixer, and then assemble them, make them solid, and resize them to fit on one base. I hope you found this content useful. Um, if you have any other questions or comments, leave them below. If you would like to see more of these types of videos, how-tos or tutorials on how I've done various modeling things or printing things or terrain things, whatever you want to know, uh, let me know, and I'll see what I can do. And as always, happy gaming and happy 3D printing.